Welcome to Glorious Botafogo, your number one source of Botafogo news in English. The Alvinegro beat Cuiabá in Cuiabá yesterday, two goals to one. Mateo Ponte scored the second goal for the Alvinegro, and Cauê scored the first one, which was the opening um, goal of the match in the first half. About five minutes into the match, Cauê uh, hit a long shot from outside the box and scored. I, I thought it was actually Eduardo f at first. And uh, and then Isidro Pita scored on a penalty kick, which I have to say it was one of the most grotesque, one of the dumbest, one of the worst penalty kicks that I have ever seen in my 35 years of watching Botafogo. This was... Given the circumstances, given the age of technology and VAR and all of that, why would Lucas out there push Isandro Pita the way that he did? The ball wasn't even going to go to the player. He wasn't even in the play. And then Lucas out there came from behind him and just straight up pushed. It is imperative. It is of utmost urgency that Botafogo needs to sign another defender to play on that right side. I cannot say that enough. Lucas Alte is not ready to play in a club like Botafogo because what he did yesterday, imagine if that was at the end of the match and Cuiabá would have won 2-1 or, or tied the match 1-1. A player that will make a mistake like that is bound to make it again and it is bound to to hurt the team's goals for the season. He will most certainly cost us points like he has already, like we like he could have have because in the beginning of the second half he could not keep up with his under Peter and they almost scored again. So Lucas out there I have never been confident in him. I thought that these past performances that he has been having is nothing but a average, but we don't need average players. We need exceptional players. We need good players. They're going to perform good and perform exceptionally. And Lucas out there is not that guy. He needs to go. He needs to be loaned out because he's not good enough to play about the full. Speaking of exceptional players, Alain had his official press conference on Wednesday morning, I believe, yesterday morning or the day before. He spoke to Botafogo TV about his negotiations with the club that's been going on since the beginning of the year. Um, Alan tried to come to Botafogo in the beginning of the year, but the um, his team and the, the directors of the Awada, they were not keen on le letting him leave earlier, which I guess it ended up working out for Alain because he won a title there um, in one of his very last few matches for the club. And Alain was just very happy to be there. He was very happy to to be signing with the club, the club that he's a fan of, the club that he's been a supporter since he was a kid. Um, and he made it very clear there was no talks, there were no negotiations, and there were no chances of Alain going to Vasco. That's never happened. That was not even a possibility. But it's things that the media will, will say and speak of and, and create these fictional stories just, just to cause some sort of problem, just to cause, just to plant the seed in the mind of the supporters or something is going to go wrong, when in fact it was never really going to go wrong. I mean, Alain said, in the press conference that he is making the dream come true you know where he was in the stands watching Botafogo and Bangu when he was a kid to now putting on the jersey and playing for his team 20 something plus years later as a professional player as an, a, an exceptional professional player and now he's just going to play for the club that he's always watched from abroad Alan said that he's been watching the matches and it's just happy to see players that want to be here players that that have a desire to be here. And Alain is certainly one of them. And Alain is very welcomed here. So I hope he will stay and he will retire at Botafogo with nothing but exceptional performances under his belt.
speaking of more exceptional players, Thiago Amada, the 2022 World Cup champion, has arrived at Botafogo. He got to Rio de Janeiro this morning, and there were a lot of fans there at the airport to receive Almada. Thiago Franklin and other independent journalists were there at the airport today taking photos and pictures and asking questions. Almada will wear the number 23 jersey, which is his favorite number. He's his lucky number, according to himself. He will play the Olympics with Argentina. So we will have Almada for more or less 12 to 14 matches in the Brasileirão. He should be back in time to play Palmeiras. Uh, and if it doesn't, then maybe he'll be there early. Um, if it's Especially if Argentina loses, uh, he'll be back in time um, to play these matches. If not, then he might not be able to play until perhaps the return match against Palmeiras. I am not sure. Um, I would have to, to look that up again. But he's here. As you can see here, he, here with the supporters uh, answering questions. And he said that he was very uh, happy to see the supporters there, the amount of um, support that he got today at the airport and he in, in, online. He just wants to um, repay the supporters by performing on the pitch. So we will see something, you know, these things can always happen. Players are not machines. Players are humans and they have feelings. And let's just say that Almada stays here and, and he scores a bunch of goals and he helps Botafogo wins one or two titles, who is to say that he doesn't want to stay an extra six months? Maybe not, but maybe he will. And it is really incredible in a negative way and really insane how bad the referee callings have been happening in the Brazil. They've been, they've been getting worse over time. Worse. Yesterday was the third match in a row that the referees, with the help of VAR, did not give the opposition player, a player from the, op from the opposite team, a red card against Botafogo. It was Martinelli versus Fluminense. It was the foul against Cheche Hugo Moura versus Vasco. And yesterday against Cuiabá on Gregory. All three of those. I mean, it's foot down on shin. It's the cleats. On shin, the bottom of the cleats, on the shin, and on the um, ankle joints of Botafogo players. And when will CBF do something about this? And maybe it will happen when somebody breaks her leg, like João Paulo broke his leg versus Vasco years ago. That caused him to be out for a whole year. What if that happens to Thiago Amada? What if that happens to Luis Henrique? What if that happens to Chiquinho? If that happens to Chiquinho, that's a career that, that's over. His career is done. If it happens to Damian Suarez, to Eduardo, their careers are done. But these referees will be out for a couple of matches and they'll be back on. It's just a slap on the wrist. Something needs to be done. These referees are horrible. These referees are terrible. And it could be that CPF has something behind this because it, it is insane. It is unimaginable that something like this keeps happening. But the Fogo sent a letter to CBF today talking about this, but I doubt anything will happen because CBF's president, Eginaldo Rodriguez, said that he is going to pursue the lawsuit versus John Texture. He did not go to the meeting that him and John Texture were supposed to make amends, and he says that he doesn't want to make amends with John Texture. So what kind of message does that send to Botafogo? To referees this needs to stop this needs to stop and unfortunately i think it will take not just one not just two maybe a few several major injuries for something to change if you've gotten here so far please leave a like please share the video with your friends and subscribe so if you're on youtube subscribe if you're on x follow me if you are on instagram follow me but if you are on my socials please follow please like and please share because it really does help out if there's anything major throughout the week i will bring a video asap if not then i'll bring a video sometime this weekend probably on sunday after the match versus um, atletico mineiro tomorrow there will be the press conference of igor jesus and hopefully there'll be some more um, signing announcements soon and i really hope one of those will be a center back